Hey there, it's Joan Scalzi, and I am going to answer a bunch of questions about science fiction and my novels. And let's get started. Here's the first question. Do you think a novel about a universe with a collapsing trade route and the world's being isolated could ever possibly resonate as much as it does now? No. I honestly had no idea that what I was writing was something that was going to be completely parallel to what's going on in the real world. It really wasn't the intention. When I started off, I was thinking about 16th century trade routes from England to uh, the New World. So honestly, the fact that there are any parallels at all with the universe that we live in right now uh, kind of caught me by surprise. But then again, I live now. So yeah. Question two, what are you reading to help pass time in isolation? Uh, a lot of different things. Uh, I get a lot of books that are sent to me in ARC form or if they've just come out. And so basically I've been grazing a lot. Um, I've been reading the new um, Tamsin Muir book, which is uh, Harrow the Ninth, which is the sequel to Gideon Ninth, which was just nominated for a Nebula and a Hugo and a, and a bunch of other stuff. You can see some of them back there. You know, uh, on my shelves, which are unfortunately not in anywhere near enough focus for you to see what's up there. But trust me, I'm reading quite a lot. Uh, new question. How hard is it to conclude a trilogy? Is it harder to nail the ending and wrap up the strands in the end than it is to write the first two volumes? Did you ever feel boxed in because things that happened earlier? No, that's the answer to the second question first. Honestly, I always knew that I was writing a series of books this time, which is not always the case. Sometimes I write books and then I find out that they're going to be a series because the first one sold enough to sell more. But this one I knew from the beginning there was going to be two or three books, so I had time to plan things out and to do character arcs and everything else like that. So generally speaking, it was not a difficult thing for me to do this time around. Uh, it was nice to have three books and know that I had three books that I would be able to solve problems in. Um, so now actually it was, I think, probably easier than it otherwise might have been. Uh, next question. A question inspired by Old Man's War. Do you think older people are an underestimated and underutilized resource in our current society? Sure. Um, and I think younger people are too, and probably some folks in the middle age. There's always going to be some um, ageism uh, and some expectations regarding people dividing, mean, dividing them up into age and other categories as well. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, older folks get underappreciated for uh, the skills and experience and everything else that they have. Um, but to some extent, younger people are uh, underestimated in lots of different ways. And the folks in the middle, like me at the moment, um, have their uh, underestimations as well. We just kind of suck as a species and we should probably do better. Next question. Where do you get your ideas? An unoriginal question, I know. You are right. But the person asking was very intrigued by the smelly blob alien in Agent to the Stars. You know, the question isn't where I get the ideas, because ideas just are like literally everywhere. Um, the real question is, what do I know is a good idea as opposed to a bad idea? And um, basically, I think the good ideas are the ones that stick around, not just for like a day, but for like a month or a year. Uh, and the bad ones just drop out of my head right away. And when I say good versus bad, it doesn't mean stuff that is mainstream versus weird or whatever. It just means something that I end up thinking about a lot over a long period of time. So with the smelly blob aliens and Agent of the Stars, that was just something that I thought about over uh, you know a couple of months. And while I was thinking about it, my brain was problem solving. So when I got to writing, it made sense to go with them. So uh, yeah. as a student of word and language, why do you think so many people pronounce ukulele ukulele instead of ukulele? Uh, I mean, I always pronounce it ukulele. I mean, I I was not aware it was supposed to be ukulele. I'm I'm confused by this question, quite frankly. I. Uh, uh, it's a ukulele. It's a ukulele. It's a ukulele. Look. It's a ukulele. It's, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, next question. 
For lock -in, how early in the writing process did you make the decision not to gender the main character? Was this a difficult way to write? Um, were some of the readers' responses to this? What were some of the readers' responses to this? Did many people make gender assumptions and never realize the lack of pronouns? Um, last question first. Yes, a lot of people just assumed Chris was a he, uh, partly because Van was very definitely uh, a woman. Uh, and also just because that's the general societal default in, in the absence of any other information default to a white dude. Um, so I knew from the very beginning that I didn't know Chris's gender. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, before I started, I knew that I didn't know it. And Chris has never revealed to it, it to me, I should say. There have been times where I will accidentally say like he or she or something like that. And people are like, ah, 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 I caught you. But that's just, you know, a slip because my brain is like, you still need a gendered pronoun in there somewhere because I'm an old person and they was not something that came naturally to me. That being said, I always knew I wasn't gendering Chris. So um, that being the case, I always had that in mind while I was writing. I mean, I solved some of the problems there by writing Chris in first person, which solved a lot of pronoun issues from a technical point of view. And then for the rest of it, Chris is in a threep, which is a non-gender specific Android body. So it really was easier to do that way. So yeah, no, I knew from the very beginning. Um, and last question, if you had to be in isolation with one of your characters, who would you choose? Probably Jane Sagan, because Jane Sagan is explicitly modeled after my wife. So that would basically be the same as like being quarantined with my wife, which I am being quarantined with my wife right now. And I have to say it's excellent. So uh, yeah, Jane Sagan, that's my answer to that. And then uh, finally, finally, I have a request that if I want to end by playing a little from the ukulele that I can do that. Um, and okay, I will do that. This is this is my ukulele. It's a blue ukulele. I don't know how you would want to pronounce that, but um, and uh, so um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a song that I can play for you. There was a big conference recently where a bunch of like famous people sang "Imagine." going to sing the whole thing, uh, but I do think it's a nice sentiment, although, you know, uh, perhaps the actually famous people got a little carried away with it. But I will say this, I hope that uh, quarantine is treating you all okay, and that you are uh, staying safe and responsible and all that sort of stuff. And at the end of this, uh, we will all be able to get together again and actually uh, spend time in each other's presence. That would be great. Until then, it was great to uh, have this moment with you. You all take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>